how many WordPress plugins should you install on your WordPress website? And how many is too many? And what happens if you install too many? That's what we're going to be talking about today. I'm Alex from Ideaspot. Let's talk about WordPress plugins. So how many plugins is the right number for WordPress? This is a question we get asked quite a lot. Are there any risks of running too many plugins? Let's talk about how many is too many and what do we actually mean by too many? Because it's not completely straightforward. How many do we actually need? Let's go through the basic configurations of common WordPress setups and see how many do we usually need to build a good WordPress website. We can look at some examples to how many do some big WordPress websites actually use on their production sites and which plugins are heavy or slow. So there are specific plugins which cause a lot more load than others. Some are very simple and lightweight. Some are very heavy and cause the website to slow down if you use too many of those. So there are some good lists that we can look at to identify which ones are particularly heavy. And how do we choose good plugins? So there's a few methods that we can look at when we're evaluating a plugin to put on our own site. Let's make good choices when we put plugins on our WordPress websites. So what if we use too many? I've put too many in quotes there because it's not really about too many, like I said before. You can use lots and dozens of well-coded, small, lightweight plugins and it's gonna to be totally fine. If you use a few big bloated ones, you can slow the website down. So what you'll end up with is slow performance and you can overload your hosting. This is particularly common on cheap hosting where you don't have many resources. You need to be very careful about running the right plugins on your site. So you can end up with unreliable or an unstable site. Uh, you can end up with bugs and conflicts that are hard to troubleshoot. So if you end up with a problem, you have to go through all the plugins, you have to deactivate all of them, reactivate them one by one and figure out where the problem is. If you've got 50 or 60 plugins, that can take a long time. So it is good to minimize them where possible, but you do need as many uh, as you need, obviously, to get the right amount of functionality on your site. So first up, I've got a basic list. So a minimalist WordPress site, a very simple blog might have 10 plugins. That will usually involve a page builder, something like Elementor or Beaver Builder, uh, something like that, or a blocks add-on. So cadence blocks or ultimate add-ons for Gutenberg, some type of builder or blocks add-on. Then we've got things like speed and image optimization. So you might have something like Imagify or Smoosh, something like Rocket or Lightspeed, an SEO, something like Yoast or Rank Math, a contact form, Google Analytics, a backup plugin, a security plugin, SMTP for mail notifications, and maybe accelerated mobile pages. So 10 plugins, that's sort of a basic minimal setup. If you go ahead and make an e-commerce site, you probably can add at least six more to that list straight away. So WooCommerce, Stripe Payment Plugin, PayPal Payment Plugin, a funnel, something like cart flows is pretty common, a wishlist plugin, maybe a cart abandonment plugin to make extra sale conversions. So that's six more, you're up to 16 in total. That's for a very basic uh, e-commerce website. And next, I've identified some very common add-ons. I won't go into the specific plugins, but there's lots of different ones that do the same thing, but you could add 15 more plugins for very common uh, functionality additions, something like custom fields, custom logins, code snippets, page duplication, a cookie notice or a GDPR plugin, social media, social proof, email marketing, URL redirection, live chat, a membership plugin, a spam protection plugin, comment systems, bulletin boards, and push notifications. So you could have up to 15 more plugins on, on fairly common websites. So that brings up, up to a total of 31. So this is getting towards the heavier end of the system. You may find if you were using very cheap web hosting and you're trying to use 30 plus plugins, this is where you might start to notice some effects of running all that extra code on the WordPress website. But if we're making generalizations, a typical business website is probably going to be in that 20 to 30 plugin range. Let's look at some example sites. So I've got some quite big website examples here. So WP Beginner, I really like this website for WordPress tutorials. They are running 62 active plugins at the moment. If we actually head over to wpbeginner.com and have a look here, we can see that it looks like a fairly small tech blog, but actually this is a huge business, it has 1.3 million readers at the moment. So it's quite a big website, has lots and lots of content, and they are running over 60 plugins. So even though they're running that many plugins, you'll notice that the site is still extremely fast, easy to use. The number of plugins hasn't slowed this site down significantly at all. So part of that is going to be choosing good plugins and the other part of it is going to be having powerful web hosting. So they've probably got quite good dedicated hardware behind this website to make sure it is running all those plugins nice and quickly. 
But feel free to check out this list. They've got opt-in monster, WP forms, monster insights. These all will use quite a high number of plugins. So feel free to browse to those sites and have a look, see the effects of running lots of plugins. It doesn't necessarily slow down the website all that much. But having said that, don't try to load 60 plus plugins onto your little GoDaddy or HostGator shared host and expect it to be fast. It definitely won't be. These guys are bigger businesses who can afford good hardware to run these nice and quickly. In terms of finding out which plugins are very heavy or slow, there's a couple good articles I've found on the topic. So 73 slow WordPress plugins to avoid by onlinemediamasters.com. This is a good list. You'll notice that a lot of page builders are on here, Avada, and a lot of things that require membership or readers to log in are on here as well. So go ahead and check this list. It doesn't mean don't use these plugins. You'll notice something like as common as WooCommerce is on here because WooCommerce is quite a heavy plugin. So if you don't need to use WooCommerce, don't use it. But if you want to sell things, it's obviously the best one to be using. So just be aware if you're running WooCommerce, try to minimize anything else on this list that might slow your website down. So I'm not saying completely avoid this list. For example, I use Yoast on some websites and I don't find Yoast to slow down the websites too much provided that you don't combine too many of these together. So uh, make sure you test. If you find something on this list, make sure you test it and make sure it is not slowing your site down in your particular use case. The other article that's really good is 30 plus WordPress plugins that use a lot of server resources. So this is by freelancerstools.com and this one actually provides solutions as well as plugins to avoid. So with Backup Buddy, you could look at using Updraft or All-in-One Migration. These are good examples of alternatives that run quicker than the ones that are slower. So this is quite a good article as well. If you notice that you're using things, something like Contact Form 7 is quite an old contact form that gets used commonly but can be easily replaced by some of the newer, quicker versions of Contact forms for example but I'm, I'll share this list in the description and I'll share this one in the description as well so you can check it out for yourself now in terms of choosing good plugins probably the easiest way is to get them from the WordPress repository and you can actually check their ratings and their active installs so both of these two pieces of information are very important if they don't have many active installs if they've only got 12 or 15 or 200 it's a very small number of active installs you can't quite trust it if you really need a reliable plugin. If it has 100,000 or a million or uh, even 10 or 20,000, if it's a fairly new plugin, that can be fairly trustworthy. Also with the stars, if it starts to drop below four stars, that can be a little dicey. There might be good reasons for that, but uh, make sure you check those star ratings. Check the one star reviews to see why, if they have any problems. But yeah, I think active installs is a good indicator and also that star rating is a good indicator in the WordPress repository. For example, if we check out contact form seven here, we can actually see the plugin page and we can see the one star reviews there and you can load those up. You can check for yourself and see what the issues are and see if anything might apply to your use case. But generally speaking, anything on the first few pages of the popular or the recommended page is gonna be pretty safe bets. So besides checking the number of active installs and the star rating, you can also search social media for reviews. You can Google for reviews, but sometimes the reviews are just affiliate reviews, so they're not always that trustworthy. But social media, something like Reddit, Facebook, you're on YouTube right now, obviously you can find fairly decent unbiased information about plugins that you might be interested in as well. But I think what we can conclude is the right number is probably going to be somewhere between 10 and 30 in most cases. And for big businesses, you might get over 50, but uh, usually that 20 to the 30 range is pretty common. If you are experiencing slowdowns, I've got a tutorial. I'll put that up on the screen right now. That is how to optimize your WordPress website. Um, so check that one out too. That's very useful as well. But thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.